Being a data analyst is about more than just coding and building dashboards. You know, people often forget that what separates a good data analyst from a truly great data analyst is not necessarily the ability to write the most complex and efficient code or the ability to create the most difficult and advanced visualizations in Tableau or Power BI. And if you're wondering why I have this beautiful sling on my arm, it's because I broke my shoulder blade over the weekend whilst playing football. Anyway, being a data analyst is about a lot more than cleaning and transforming data and building reports. There are many other aspects of the job that are just as important, if not more important, than the pure data analyst technical skills. I feel like in the field of data analytics, there's a constant emphasis on technical skills, whether it's mastering coding languages like Python or navigating SQL databases, handling Excel formulas, or creating compelling dashboards with tools like Tableau or Power BI. Now, don't get me wrong, technical skills play a huge factor and you can actually find great paid and free resources to the best courses and certificates on my data roadmap. I'll put the link in the description below. Technical skills serve as the foundation for your analytical journey, but being a successful data analyst or any kind of data person really goes above and beyond mere technical expertise. It involves more than just crunching numbers and code. For example, the best pieces of work I produced recently all involved understanding and connecting the data and business requirements, coordinating with various key stakeholders to build solutions that solve people problems and hence business problems. I built a Tableau dashboard a couple days ago that technically speaking was not difficult at all. Just some summary figures, bar charts, and line charts. But there was a huge amount of time and effort that went into it. I spoke to senior leaders to understand the business problem, which was to track all the priority outcomes in a single tool and create one view for our entire team, not just my direct team, but the wider team as well. I then proposed a project management tool for tracking the outcomes and developed a template with the right format and structure for the various teams to capture their data. And then I used an API to extract the data from the project management tool to finally build my Tableau dashboard, for which I of course had to also gather the data and business requirements, agree the layout, and the functionality. I hope you can see that technical skills or proficiency using tools like Excel, SQL, Python, or Tableau purely give you the ability to do real value add data analytics, which is to filter out the noise and navigate the space between data and business decisions. If you are looking for more data advice, data tips, and my very own personal insights, then make sure to sign up to my weekly newsletter, Career Compass. It's completely free, it's short, and entertaining with actionable insights that you can start implementing immediately to break into data analytics or progress your data career further. The link is in the description below. Feel free to check it out. And always remember, becoming a great data analyst or any kind of data person is about your ability to address real world challenges using the power of correctly understanding, interpreting and extracting insights out of data. All right. I think that's enough about how to become a truly great data analyst. I'm going to go practice what I just preached as I do have a couple of other team meetings and calls with business stakeholders alongside some dashboard refinement work that I need to move on to. So I will catch you later. All right. So lots of you have been asking me in the comments about my exercise routine and what I do to stay fit and healthy. So my initial idea was to show you my workout regimen. But given that I recently broke my shoulder blade, like I said, I thought I'd show you some really cool and free data tools instead. Tools that you can start using immediately and include them in your data analysis workflow. I'll give you my current top five list in no particular order, starting with data tool number one, quick db D. So this is a tool that allows you to draw database diagrams by just typing. It's super convenient and quick. The free version gives you one free diagram with up to 10 tables, which should be more than enough to use for a specific portfolio project of yours. And speaking of portfolio projects, don't forget to check out my ultimate portfolio template as it contains four projects of mine with exclusive end-to-end -end expert write-ups, presentations, and detailed summaries. Think of it as a one-stop shop for all of your projects where you can publish your entire data portfolio to the web without having to code anything at all. I'll put the link in the description below. Make sure you have a look 
if you haven't already done so. So data tool number two would be table convert, which lets you convert your data source from all kinds of file types to all kinds of other file types. So say, for example, you could convert your data in an Excel file to JSON, SQL, or Markdown format, or you could convert your JSON arrays to CSV, DAX, or PHP. Honestly, the options are endless, and it's such a useful tool for converting your data sources to and from various different formats. Certainly a time saver and certainly free. What an amazing tool, right? Moving on to tool number three, which is Mockaroo. And maybe you can already tell from the name this tool allows you to create mock data sets for whatever analysis you want to do. I've used this many times before when I just wanted some relatively realistic data quickly. There are so many fields you can choose from, fields like name, location, or email addresses, for example. You can also create your own custom lists or character sequences, so it really is highly customizable. Tool number four is more like a full-on platform, really, where you can learn it all and you can learn everything data related. And this platform is W3Schools. They have so many tutorials and exercises, so you could learn about statistics, learn to code or learn how to use Excel or Google Sheets for free. Definitely a great resource and one I'd recommend if you're after free learning materials. And last, but not least, Kaggle. I know it's very popular and widely known, but I thought I'd just mention it here in case some of you don't know about it. You can find great data sets no matter what category or industry you're after, but if you have no clue where to start, you can always just search some popular ones like sales, customer churn, or marketing analytics. Once you pick the data set, you can use the data card to preview your data, the code section to see what others have done with the same data set, and the discussion page to find the answers for some frequently asked questions. If you fancy it, there's nothing stopping you from entering a competition and give it your best shot. To be honest, I felt a bit burned out a while ago with my full-time job and YouTube. I was working literally every single day of the week, so it really felt like I was getting no break at all. I wanted to spend more time with my wife and our very own good boy, Rocket. So I promised myself that I would try and get the majority of my YouTube and YouTube-related activities, like the Career Compass newsletter or my coaching sessions or working on digital products like the Ultimate Portfolio. I tried to get these done from Monday to Friday so that I can lessen the workload on the weekends. Now, this has been working pretty well so far, as I do feel like there is actually a difference between my weekdays and weekends in terms of how busy I am and how much work I need to do. Sometimes I wish I could just completely unplug and disconnect from all the social media and maybe even the internet in general. So I have also been making a conscious effort to use my laptop and phone as little as possible on the weekends. I was never really a big fan of social media, believe it or not. Before starting my YouTube channel, I didn't even have Twitter, Instagram or TikTok. I mean, I still don't have Twitter or X and I very occasionally post on TikTok, but Instagram I do find is quite good for staying up to date with what's going on with my friends. It's a pretty small and uh, personal account. So if you do want to follow me there, you can get a real insight into my pretty simple, basic and wholesome life. So yeah, follow me if you want to. My Insta handle is at mo underscore chan one. And to end on a data related note, if there's one thing you remember and take away from this video, let it be the fact that technical skills are not everything. They are important and without reaching a certain level of technical proficiency, for sure you won't be able to become a great data analyst or data scientist or data engineer. But after a certain threshold, it almost becomes irrelevant unless you're a genius and you're so good that you're gonna be the one fine-tuning the code behind the large language models at OpenAI. I have very, very strong technical skills but I consider my greatest assets to be the ability to think for myself, the ability to connect with both technical and non-technical audiences, the ability to understand and interpret both the data and the business requirements and translate them into actions, next steps, or meaningful insights, and the ability to influence business critical decisions by telling compelling data stories. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to check out some of my other videos right here and here. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch this, and I shall see you in the next one.